friends welcome back to my channel for this video i'd like to share a quick update on my one book july setup it's been almost two weeks since i started this challenge and so far so good i am still using my Giulio giramundo xl nothing much has changed on my setup i did add a binder clip pen loop here in the back I got this pen loop on Etsy from a store called Fun Paper Crafts. I bought a set of three and I really love it. It's super duper cute. So I just have this clipped into the back of my Jibun Techo zipper insert here. And I did wrap the plastic backing with this washi tape because when I placed this binder clip on the plastic, it would scrape and scratch against it and little plastic shavings were coming off. So that freaked me out a little bit. So. I just added this washi tape to protect the plastic. So it goes like that on the back of my Giramundo and I just put in my pen like that. And that looks really cute. And then the other change that I made on my setup is I added this little pick crew avatar of me. I thought it was really cute and this is pretty close to how I look like and how I dress. So I love it and I just wanted it in my planner. Otherwise, nothing else has changed. I will say that doing One Book July has definitely revealed some weaknesses in my previous planner lineup before, which is pretty silly to say when I was using, what, two, three planners at once. But that's what I was hoping to get out of using One Book July. I was hoping to realize what I really needed and I think I'm getting there. First, let me talk about how I'm using my One Book July bullet journal. As I've said before, this is a blank moleskin notebook that I'm using as a bullet journal. And as you can see, I've been doing a lot of art journaling in this notebook. These pages are well loved. And I won't be able to show you a flip through right now, but as always, I've chosen a few spreads to show you to give you an idea on how I've been using this bullet journal. So like I mentioned in my previous video, I was hoping to use a day on two page layout for my planning. And this is how I use it. This spread is pretty bare. I don't always decorate my planner pages on this notebook. Not every spread in this notebook is decorated and that's fine with me. That's something that I'm learning with this challenge, just being okay with having a simple minimal spread. So as I planned, I have tasks on the left and then a notes page on the right. And the notes page is very flexible. It can be anything I need it to be. So on this day, I took notes on how to deal with planner burnout. This video was from Plant Based Bride. I'll link it down below if you're curious. I really enjoyed it. And then on this day, I wrote down my grocery list. I just wanted to write it down before I put in the order. And then I did add a bit of decoration to this spread, Weekend at Home. As you know, we are staying at home. So every weekend is a weekend at home. And then some days I just don't even write anything on the note page because I didn't have anything to write down. So that's one thing I've learned from using this setup is that I don't always need the notes pages, but when I do use it, I'm really glad that I have it. So if I were to edit my planner system after this month going forward, I think I'm not going to go with a day on two pages. I'm going to use something a little bit more flexible and something that's not so spread out. Because as much as I love the idea of a day on two pages, this is too large for me. The A5 slim size or the moleskin large size. This is my favorite size, but it's definitely not the one for a day on two page spread. And since I don't always need a notes pages, I'm going to go back to my week on two page spread after July. And actually, I ended up missing that spread that I ended up recreating it on this bullet journal, which is really silly, but I found that I really do need this type of spread. I need it for a tracker and I needed to put down my weekly goals. And I also did some decorating on this spread. Going back to my notes section, something that I realized looking back on my weekly Moleskine planner is I didn't really do a lot of note taking on my planner. So here is an example. I have plenty of room for tasks on the weekly rows here. So space isn't an issue for to do's, but I wasn't really utilizing the notes pages as much as I should. So I did have a chore tracker here 
and I did write down a little blurb for what video I wanted to work on that week but if you take away the stickers and this little photo I had a lot of room for notes and I just didn't utilize the space that way because I wanted to save room for my photo of the week which is really silly because that's kind of doing it backwards right I, I should be using the right side for functionality and then do the decorating later you can see a clearer example of it here on this spread so again I have the tracker and then I have all this space for notes that I just didn't use because I wanted to decorate it at the end of the week and as much as I love decorating that's not what a planner is for threading these realizations back together as I said I don't always use the notes page every day because I don't always need it but again I'm really happy when I do have it so I think at the end of the day this space is plenty of room for me to take notes on whatever I need for the week so if I wanted to write down a grocery list notes on the video I'm a tiny writer so I think I have a lot of space to work with so moving forward after one book July I think I am going to shuffle the way I use my weekly spreads on my moleskin planner and then another thing I learned from one book July is I'm over bullet journaling I hated sitting here and drawing all these lines I hated having to write down the dates every day it, this doesn't take very long for me to do but I just don't enjoy it anymore I think back then it wasn't such a big deal because I wasn't as busy before as I am now so I didn't mind sitting down every day to write the dates or make pretty graphs or whatever else but now I just have so many things going on and I'm trying to juggle a lot of things that writing this down every week and writing the dates down every day it just annoys me it bugs me so that's another thing I've learned about myself using this challenge as much as I love bullet journaling and how much it served me last year it's not working for me in this phase of my life I'm not completely writing it off just yet I'm sure as times change and my baby gets older and my life changes bullet journaling might be what I need in the future but for now it's too much work for me to do this I need something that's already printed out for me laid out for me because I don't want to have to think about making a layout every week but with that said I am still doing one book July I haven't quit yet I, I don't want to quit I hate quitting <laughs> so I am still using this notebook and to be fair despite my grievances about the planning portion of my bullet journal I am very much enjoying the journaling side of it so I save a spread for planning a spread for me being a left page and a right page this together is a single spread so in a single day I have a planning spread and then I have a journaling spread and I love 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 journaling in this size I have so much room to write I have so much room to decorate and I really look forward to journaling every night because it's just such an enjoyable experience for me granted I don't always journal as artfully as this every night because it depends on how busy I was what my energy level is at the end of the day but this is an example of how I journal in this notebook I did do some decorating here and here is my Galen leather pen case which I am so obsessed about I can't get enough of my pen case I'm obsessed I want to get the a5 zip folio and the crazy horse leather now because it's so nice and then here is another example of how I'm using the journaling side of my notebook and I'm just trying to use up some washi tape that I've had sitting in my drawer for like months and months and then sometimes I just have pure writing like this because some days I do just want to write and I don't want to have to decorate some nights I'm just in a writing mood and I just want to experience my fountain pens and enjoy the way it writes so my journaling spread doesn't have to be decorative it can be anything I need it to be and then here is the current week I do like to put a little washi tape bookmark here on the side just to mark the weeks so it's easy for me to flip through and <laughs> I need to update my tracker here after this video but I like to use a weekly spread to forward plan the incoming week and as you can see I have some reminders here to run my Roomba if I don't write it down on my planner I'm gonna forget I don't know why I just I just forget to do it <laughs> so I need to write down these reminders and then once I do some forward planning on my 
notebook, that's when I start doing the daily pages here. And if you're curious, here's how much I've filled up so far. I haven't taken up too much of this notebook yet. I don't think I'll be able to fill it up at the end of the month, but that's okay. I'm planning on taking the Franklin Covey planner course they have online. So I am most likely going to be using the second half of this notebook for note taking. So that's it for my very quick update on One Book July. I am enjoying my setup despite its shortcomings and I love having a properly fitted cover for my moleskin. Again, if you're curious, this is the Giulio Giramundo XL. I also have this Chic Sparrow in the Tea House Chamomile. Okay, that's it for my ramblings about One Book July. I know this one was a little all over the place. This is why I script my videos before talking because I tend to be all over the place, but this was a bit last minute. So if you're still here, thank you so much for watching. And I hope I see you again at the end of the month when I share with you my final One Book July update. This is Spellbound Notes and I will see you next time. Bye!